the 70s, many boys would have on their bedroom walls a poster of either a Lamborghini Countach, a Ferrari, or a Porsche 911 Turbo. For me, uh, the car that really stood out uh, and uh, retained in my memory is a Porsche 911 Turbo. And this is the story about how I managed to chance support it here in Singapore and to turn this dream into reality. I've always liked classic sports cars and my first one was an Alfa Romeo Spider. Well, it's interesting that classic motoring can invoke a sense of romance and my wife and I enjoyed driving around in Singapore in this little Alfa Spider. It was also an excellent prop when we wanted to take some photos and our friend Ng King did a great job to capture the romance of classic motoring. And it was this Alpha Spider that brought me to my childhood dream car. When it was time to sell the Alpha, one of the potential buyers was a classic Porsche collector who wanted to reduce his collection. And he offered me the rare first generation 3 liter 911 Turbo. And this was made in small numbers from 1975 to 1977. Well, a few weeks went by and I sold the Alpha Spider to another buyer. He liked the condition of my car and bought it immediately. After this, I went back to the Porsche 911 Turbo owner and bought my childhood dream car. There are different kinds of classic car collectors. Some like to fiddle around with their cars in their free time, while others like to drive their cars in historic events around the world. So why do I collect classic cars or old cars? Well, for one, it brings me back to a time when I was just growing up. Uh, it's about nostalgia. For this car, it's almost like a time machine, right? Whenever I step in it uh, and I turn the key or the radio on. It brings me back to the 1970s, a time when I was growing up a time when perhaps things were simpler and time of innocence. quite lucky that uh, at that time when I was looking, there was one which was actually quite uh, at an affordable price with not much COE but which was uh, doable to buy and to start as a, as a project, you know, to actually slowly build it or at least to get it to actually work. Well, uh, it's, a, it's quite a learning curve or a learning cliff actually uh, in terms of trying to deal with the cars. Uh, so initially I had quite a few experiences with, uh, with mechanics as well. Uh, so in terms of cost and time, I mean, I had one mechanic, when I called him up for an appointment, he told me I had to wait for uh, two months just to get my car looked at, you know. So pretty much that kind of led me to start doing more work on my own. For me, it's just, uh, I have great satisfaction working on the car that I can actually uh, work on it and get the car to actually run. Sometimes I just, at night, I think back to what I had done and. Um, how I could do the next day's thing and you know it's just nice that you're very self-sufficient as well. Hi, my name is uh, Chia Kui Ki. I'm a retired lawyer living in Singapore. In the last 10-15 years, uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed doing was to participate in car rallies. In this Milli Miller rally, which is uh, participated by motoring enthusiasts from all over the world, and uh, in the rally, my car was given a rally number. This is the rally number 107. Uh, or in Italian, they would say Sante Cette, you know. And then uh, when I came back, I had a friend called Christopher Tan in business times in those days. So I called him and I said, Hey, I've got a story to tell you. Do you want to listen? He said, Yeah, yeah, I come, I come in. He went, he went to my office in Shenton Way in those days. 
and over more than two hours, he uh, took down my story uh, just by making notes and then I supplied him with some photos and the result of that interview was this spread in the Business Times. This was Business Times Singapore. This is the car, my car that I was driving along one of the stretches on the mountains. This is a map of the route from Brescia down to Rome and back to Brescia. To sum up, this rally to me, I'm so glad I did it in those days when I was about, about 50 years old, I think. Uh, you ask me to do it now, I probably don't have the strength. So I'm very glad I did it and uh, it's an adventure that I think money cannot buy. So I'm glad I took the challenge in the 1990s. So what I really like about this car is its driving experience. Uh, it really has that go-kart-like feel to it. It's low and it's got the weight of the engine behind it. And it's really a sensory overload. I mean, you can hear the sound of the engine. Overall, it's just a great experience. I mean, you don't have to drive very fast in this car to experience the sounds and the handling. While collecting the car, my dream, I actually learned that it can also be an investment. And for me, this is uh, something that's really uh, good, especially in Singapore, where new cars could depreciate quite rapidly. Uh, classic cars, and especially the right classic cars, can not only hold its value, but may even appreciate. So it was a pleasant surprise to see this particular uh, 911 Turbo appreciating um, tremendously in the time that I've collected it. Uh, differences between the first uh, generation 911 Turbo versus the others. Uh, firstly, what you have is the rear tail spoiler. And under the hood is the 3 liter engine. And for the first time, Porsche has put its race bred turbo charging technology into a production car. And this is good for 260 horsepower. And in the mid 70s, this was enough to make this one of the fastest cars in the world. So at the front of the car, what you see is as well uh, that's different is that the early turbos also came with the periscope style headlamp washers. So these have become really uh, difficult to find and you can see that on bidding sites like eBay, they can be bid up to you know, a thousand US dollars just for a pair of these. Okay, finally what you see here uh, is also something that's very unique for this particular car because the 911 Turbo was not just about performance, it was also a luxury car. And what's unique is that it actually comes with a microphone. And of course, with a cassette tape. And while you're driving at 250 km per hour on our autobahn, you could take down a message for your colleagues in the office. And then when you reach the office, you can pass it on. Coming to events like this well, actually gives me a good chance to actually meet up with other uh, like-minded people and like again like today just so happened that uh, when I drove in and within five minutes some guy had spotted the car and, and, and asked me about whether it was mine and the next thing we started talking and he told me he just bought a car very very similar to mine you know so then we just kind of like even though we we're still total strangers it really didn't matter we were just talking about the car and because I, I figured that he would be experiencing a lot of things that I experienced when I first got the car. You know, I told him that he would hit things like uh, he'll have electrical issues and uh, because the car, his car was also driven, not driven for a long period of time. You know? I, I shared with him some of my own experience and, uh, and well, I pretty much have a collection of parts at home as well. So he might want to get some parts off of me uh, if, he, if he actually can't, can't get them himself. Yeah, but pretty much it's just a nice, uh, nice opportunity to meet up with, with other people. Well, it's a great atmosphere here at this event. Although there is a Concorde competition, well, I feel that what's important is not whether you win or lose, but what's important is that you really get to meet uh, fellow car enthusiasts at this event. Although it might be people that you have just met 
at this event, right? But uh, because of our common interest, uh, the feeling is like uh, these are friends whom you have known all your life. What happens is that you'll just be talking about cars, you know, a couple of car guys coming together and you'll just be talking and then before you realise it, you're talking and it's afternoon like so, And this is the, the stuff that makes events like this special. Never waste these tears on fears and cries And now the world is ours to take And every single move is ours to make Many of us have dreams and could be a childhood dream and very often uh, we think that the dream may never come true but if you go after it, step by step you can actually find that uh, your dream can actually become a reality. Soon be over, maybe paradise next. It's our paradise next. So for me, for my childhood uh, dream car, uh, this dream has actually become a reality. So do you have a dream? And will you go after it? Now the world is ours to take in every single